And I'm not sure if anyone is not muted, if you don't mind, if you're not a speaker, um, if you don't mind muting, just so we can kind of get started and make sure that everyone can hear. It looks like we have about 15 guests. So welcome everybody to the E Project. Today, we are going to have two amazing hosts or speakers that are um, Eileen Miller and Lisa Friedlander, who um, are going to explain all about who they are and their background. Um, but our topic today is called Pilot Your Idea, Taking Flight. And I really tried to be creative with this one because Lisa and Eileen had a business together called Activity Rocket. So I thought I was being super creative when I came up with the taking flight part. But anyway, without further ado, I am going to let them introduce themselves. We have a, a presentation to share. Um, I think Lisa has started it. Um, and they will tell you a little bit about themselves and then we're gonna jump right in. But today I just wanted to mention that something a little bit different we're gonna try is we're really gonna try, try and make it interactive. So if you have, um, we're, we're gonna you know, try and involve you in your, um, in this conversation so that we can kind of use you as a case study to, to hear that. So I just wanted you to be prepared to be thinking about your idea and if you might want to share it so that we can kind of discuss your idea and make it really Hi. specific. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm going to put you on mute now just yeah. while we get started, but it's so nice to hear from you and thanks for saying hi. Thank you. All right. Um, I think Eileen, are you starting? Sure. So it's so nice to see everyone. And I just want to thank Sharon and Jillian for having uh, me and Lisa. And I'll introduce myself and then Lisa will introduce herself. And then as Sharon said, we'll get started. So my name is Eileen Miller and I am both an attorney and an entrepreneur and also very involved in uh, the nonprofit community. Most recently, um, very involved in the epilepsy community and helping guide nonprofits with their strategic plans. But it was my, one of my um, probably biggest blessings was to co-found a company, which we're going to tell you about today with Lisa. Um, and we worked on that for 10 years. And we're super excited to tell you a little bit about the process of how we came up with the idea and how we launched a business um, that was ultimately acquired by another company. And with that, I'll pass over the mic, so to speak, to Lisa. Hi, everybody. It's good to see some familiar faces and some new faces. Um, if I look familiar to you, I was the lucky one that got to participate a couple of weeks ago with a gentleman named Rusty. Um, and we had a terrific time talking about sort of how to get started and some legal aspects of starting a company and things along those lines that you need to think about. Um, so I'm excited to be back here again and, of course, to be joining my forever partner, Eileen Miller. Um, we had a terrific experience with Activity Rocket, and I think I told you a little bit about that last time in terms of the importance of finding somebody to partner with you and, and do your venture with you. Um, if you remember, I'm also an attorney and became an entrepreneur and really just love the passion for for meeting people and building something. And now I am currently doing business development, growing another kind of startup within a law firm, uh, which is called Next. It's a platform for startup and emerging growth companies. We deliver legal services via fixed fee packages. So something very cool. And Eileen and I are really excited to tell you about the early stages of Activity Rocket and how we tested our concept to make sure that it was a business worth pursuing. So with that, I'll kick it back to Eileen. Great, and if you could hit the next slide, that would be great. So I, just by a show of hands for those of, that, of you that are on video, who has a big idea? We'd just love to see if anybody, and we're gonna talk about it later in the call. I see a lot of hands going up, that's awesome. So as Sharon said, as we work our way through this, we wanna hear about your big ideas. So just be thinking about them as we go through. But Lisa and I, about a decade ago, which is hard to believe it was that long ago, had a big idea. And you know, big ideas can come from a lot of different places. Sometimes a big idea can come from a skill that you have. Maybe there's something that you do incredibly well, um, and that's something that you can offer either in the form of a product or a service to other people. For us, our big idea came out of necessity. So at the time, 
we were two parents. We, between us, I had two boys and Lisa had three kids, two girls and a boy. They were all toddlers, very young. And we were looking for activities for them. Some things like swimming or karate or dance or art. How many folks on here have participated in some sort of an activity like that? So again, see a lot of hands going up. So our kids were young and we wanted to give them opportunities to try different things to sort of see what their passions were but we were having a terrible time finding those activities and it occurred to us that there were other businesses a business in particular like Expedia um, that was helping people come up with travel so if you wanted to go to visit a place like New York from Maryland you could find the best way to get there by using a tool like Expedia. And it was almost like a light bulb and the picture went off for us. And we thought, why can't I go onto a website, type in, I have a six-year-old boy who's interested in guitar, or I have a 12-year-old girl who's interested in photography and find a class that would fit our schedule, whether it was on a Tuesday afternoon or a Wednesday morning, and so that was our big idea. Our big idea was we wanted to build a website where all of the activities in Montgomery County and all the surrounding areas would be there. You could type in the criteria that were most important to you and it would pop out all these options for you so that you could pick the one that worked best for you. So we had this big idea and our very first thought was, well, Who's going to use this? Well, any you know, we think it's a great idea, but will anybody else think it's a great idea? Will anybody use it? So we'll go to the next slide. <laughs> and that's when we really started to think about our customers. Lisa, do you want to talk a little bit about the customers? Sure. Oh, did I go back? I hold on. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so for Activity Rocket, if you think about it, we had two sets of customers. Uh, it's what's called known as a marketplace. Um, other marketplaces are like eBay, right? Or, or um, gosh, there's probably a million of them. Of course, I can't think of any one of them right now. But think of eBay when you have buyers and sellers of something in one place. Um, so Activity Rocket, we had sellers of activity classes and summer camps. And then we had buyers of those classes and camps, which were parents. Um, so we had two sets of customers to think about which one, if any, would actually pay to use a site like Activity Rocket. So we'll talk about what we did to sort of get the answer to that question in, in a moment, but we had to figure out, do you have a group of people that will pay you to use your service or buy your product. Even though it could be a great idea for you or solve a unique problem that you may be experiencing, in order to turn it into a real business, there has to be more than just you, right? Or more than just a small group of people. There has to be a large enough group of individuals that will pay to use your product or your service. So for Eileen and I, we were focused on the activity providers as one set of customer, and then on the parents as the other set of customer. And we decided that between the two, while they're both technically our customers and our users, from a revenue perspective, meaning who's gonna pay us money, we are only gonna look to the activity businesses themselves. Meaning for parents, it would be free. Just like when you come to Expedia or eBay, right? You don't have to pay to use those sites. Um, so for parents, Activity Rocket was going to be free, and we were going to look to the activity providers themselves, the activity businesses, to be our paying customers. So Back to you, I. Okay, so this is where testing is truly key, right? We have this big idea. We know that we have these two sets of potential customers. We have the parents and we have the, the activity providers, but now we've got to figure out who will use our product. And actually, I think you can um, go to the next slide. 
And so what we did was we, we basically kind of broke those groups into two parts. We thought first about the parents and because we were parents, we knew a lot of other parents, right? So we talked to every parent we knew, but the trick about talking to the people that you know is that your friends and your family will often tell you that something is a great idea because they love you and they want to see you succeed. <laughs> So who's had that experience? Your mom or your dad or your best friend or your brother or your sister, they all think that's a great idea. And you're like, okay, I think it's a great idea and you think it's a great idea, but I need somebody kind of outside of my immediate circle to tell me that this is a great idea. And so we actually use some of the tools that you're seeing on the screen. We, um, we actually went to our friends and we asked our friends to go to their friends, right? And their friends to go to their friends so that we could come up with a much bigger group of people, people that didn't know us personally, that had no bias about us or the product that would give us, we were really looking for honest feedback for honest answers about whether this was something they would use. And, um, and, and we kept getting good feedback. And so that really helped us think, okay, we're, we think we are onto something here. And not only do our friends and our family think this is a great idea, but beyond our friends and our family, this extended group of parents that we've tapped into, they also think it's a great idea. The other thing that we did was we knew we needed to talk to the businesses themselves. So because if the businesses weren't gonna put their classes on our activity rocket, we wouldn't have anything to offer the parents. So we literally came up, we went into the, um, onto the, onto, uh, into directories like magazine directories and we asked our friends like, where do you take your kids for swim? Where do you take your kids for karate? Where do you go for dance? And we made a very long list of all of the businesses, you know, some that we had used personally and others that our friends had used. And we literally started knocking on doors of all those businesses. We'd walk into the art studio or the dance company or the karate studio or the swim club. And we basically would say, we'd like to sit down with you. We've got this idea and we want to see what you think about it. How do people find your classes? What do you think about a website where we would put all your classes up on our website? And the amazing thing was some of the people we knew, but a lot of these people we didn't know, and they were very happy to talk to us. They told us what they did to advertise their dance, their dance classes or their karate classes. And they told us what they were looking for, like what would be helpful to them to find new customers. And so we absorbed all of that feedback from these two different audiences. We also actually had to talk to a third audience for a subject. Oops, it looks like Eileen is freezing up a Please. tiny bit. Oh, Lise, do you think you can pick up? Yeah, need... sure. Oh, wait, I feel like she's coming. Is she coming back? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, I was just saying we, we had a third audience that we had to talk to as well. Not only the parents, not only the businesses, but we had to talk to some technology folks because we knew nothing about building a website and we needed people to say, yes, that is something you can build. So with all of that information in hand, we then, and I, we can go to the next slide. <laughs> Oh, hold on. <laughs> this one. <laughs> you want to talk a little bit about how we how we pivoted. <laughs> sure, sure. So Eileen, we the idea of creating this website with massive number of classes and activities, right? In order for it to work, if you think about a ton of activity providers and a ton of classes for it to actually be worthwhile. Right. Imagine if you went to Expedia right now, I think Southwest is the only airline, but imagine if you went to Expedia and only two airlines were on Expedia. How long do you think you would use Expedia, right? If there are only 10 hotels and two airlines, right? Not very long at all. So we had to figure out how are we going to take DC, Maryland, Northern Virginia, sort of carve out a, a test case for whether this idea would work. And we had a lot of different opinions. Some people said, okay, well, 
start with one age group, right? Just do it for toddlers and just do, you know, young kids, elementary school, or just do dance classes. Forget doing all types of activities. Just do one silo of a type of class and then test it. Um, but Eileen and I eventually decided after talking to a lot of people and sort of digging into our own ideas and passions of what we really felt would be successful, we decided we would limit the age group um, to from elementary school to middle school, but that we had to do it across all activities because we're not building a site just for dance and we weren't building a site just for sports. So what we did is we took the big idea and we narrowed it down into what's called an MVP. Number two on your screen, an MVP does not stand for most valuable player in this instance. It stands for minimum viable product, minimum viable product, minimum meaning the least product, the least, the smallest product that or service that you can deliver at this point in time to test your concept. Viable means it has to be enough to get to the next stage, right? So you have to come up with something that's simplified and maybe more narrow than your big idea, but it has to be enough to be able to get to the next level to really test it. So it's, it's definitely a balance, you know, a little bit walking on a tightrope. You have to Sort of explore what it means, what your individual product or service is, and how big you want it to be. And then when you're talking to people, sort of cull it down, bring it down to the least amount of features or the least amount of product. Like for example, maybe you want to do a bakery or you want to do a cosmetic line. Start with maybe one or two products and some theme around your products, maybe they're all natural, or you know, maybe your bakery is vegan. So for us, for Activity Rocket, we knew we wanted to be activities and camp for kids, but we narrowed it by just starting with elementary school through middle school. And actually, I believe I didn't mention this, we started just in Montgomery County. So before we went to the entire DC metro area, we started with Montgomery County and we launched our MVP, which was a beta site, a very small basic site. It did some basic things um, with about 80, 70, 80 activity providers just in Montgomery County, focusing on activities and camps for kids, you know, basically through seventh grade. And that was sort of our, our test concept. We built that MVP website, which only did some, it was more like a kayak, if you guys are familiar with kayak, where you can search and find, but you can't actually purchase anything. Whereas on Expedia, you can actually purchase something. So that was another way we decided to keep it simple by not letting people actually buy anything on our website yet. So it's a question of doing steps, right? You sort of can create your ladder with your, your basic, basic product down here. And, if I add another feature or another service or another type of baked good, eventually I'm going to get up here and have my whole business that I want to do. But you have to start down here because what you don't want to do, what you don't want to do is spend a ton of time and a ton of money on something only to find out that there's no market for it, that it's not a viable business. And that is a question that you have to be asking yourself at every step along the way. What is the market telling me? What are my customers telling me? Do I have, have I succeeded at this level to then go to the next level? And the hardest thing ever, the hardest thing ever is to look in the mirror or look at your partner when you're at a point where you don't think you're gonna make it to the next level and realize I learned a lot this may not be the right business. What have I learned? And what, can I, what am I gonna go do next? Um, so learn when it's the time to move on to the next level for your business. And then maybe perhaps also be honest with yourself in terms of when you find out that I love this idea, but it's just not gonna make it. So let me stop now and then 
focus on something else. Yeah, and we, we're gonna switch over in just a minute to start to hear your eyes, but I'll just follow up with Lisa said is that we had many a moment where we would look at each other and we would say, okay, we've made it this far, you know, do we keep going? And we would pause. Sometimes we'd even take a couple of days or a weekend to think about it. And then we came back because both of us in our gut felt like, no, we're gonna, we can go further. We're gonna go to that next step. The market still seems to want this and we still have the drive and the motivation to push. Um, I will just tell you, it's the hardest thing I've ever done, you know, to create something out of nothing, to create an idea out of nothing and to keep pushing and pushing, even when sometimes you're getting negative feedback um, but you're, you're balancing that negative and that positive feedback and you're balancing the messages that you're getting from the market as well. So what we wanna do is really hear from you. And I think maybe Sharon's gonna help us navigate, but this is the time where we'd really like to open it up and hear what some of your ideas are, hear what stage you're at as far as your idea is concerned. And this is a great opportunity for you. We'll, we're here to answer your questions and as a community to really brainstorm with you. So we, we would like to be available to you to brainstorm your ideas now. Do, Sharon, so, do you want people to raise their hand? Or yeah, what you? That, would, that would be great. I see, um, I'm looking right now. I don't see, Michelle, were you raising your hand? Well, I'll add while folks are thinking about okay, questions, great. I'll just jump in real quick and, and add to what Eileen was saying in terms of, you know, being hard and a roller coaster ride, you know, one minute something great happens and the next minute, you know, you may get the rug pulled out from under you. Um, but it's in terms of sort of digging in deep and, and understanding what you have. The, is it a diamond in the rough? you know, that you have, that if you just keep polishing it, you're definitely going to get to the next level, or did it just look like a diamond and it's really just a rock? <laughs> and those are very hard questions um, to ask yourself, and you have to sort of always be asking yourself those questions. And I think going back to sort of testing the idea and surveying people, Eileen was dead on when she said, you can't just ask the people that are close to you. Um, because they're going to tell you what you want to hear. <laughs> um, but even in how you ask the question is also very important, right? When you're writing a survey or you're sitting down with five other people in a room, that's going to be your focus group. How you ask the question is critical, right? So you have to be very careful that you're not asking leading questions or very narrow questions so that people will tendency to just say yes. Um, and then you get this great survey result back with all these yeses, but you've actually really learned not much at all. So be very careful who you ask and be very careful how you ask the question. That was a great clarification. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so, you know, I know we've been taught early on that we could use the, um, Participant, if you want a reactions, if you wanted to raise your hand with the, you know, if you don't, if some of you have a green screen, I see Mara, I see a thumbs up. Does that mean that you would like to? <laughs> Great. Right. Okay. Yes. yes. You want to sit down or you want, Mara might stand up too, just sure. her, her blood pressure stuff. So, um, so we're in a very specialized field of Mara as an artist and, um, trying to uh try a little different well focus groups so in that field you almost have to prove yourself before you get it you know people want to purchase art that other people want you know sometimes people don't understand and she's also in a so we've gotten conflicting uh information from all sorts of sources because mara's self-taught that falls into one particular area that people say don't make it look like you're marketing. You, do, you shouldn't look like, you know, you're doing hard sell. So you're all talking about things where you want to sell. It's, it make it apparent that you're trying to sell. Whereas in the field of art, it actually looks bad if you're trying to do a hard sell. And Mara's 
but she does she's great she can sell her, herself and which how she interacts with the community a lot of people you know uh, purchase art because they've met her they want you know a piece of that joy in their home um you know various reasons hopefully because they like the art and they want to live with it too um so you get so it's a kind of specialized area where you're trying to not look like maybe chefs are like that they're trying not to look like they're selling um you know it's just the good food is what you came for maybe the personality of the, the chef so <laughs> this um subtype so particularly in this self-taught area there's a lot of indication don't look like you're trying to sell and don't you know denigrate the art you, if you go to there are a lot of places they'll put things on bags and cups and pillows and various right. things and you know in the art world you maybe aren't taken seriously if you go that route suddenly you're out of the running to potentially be at a biennale with these you know once you've sure got in, in sure. um so uh there was one other point that i was going to make about that so, <laughs> um anyway so well, there is no question so, so a focus group, what would a focus group do? You know, like we, uh, people who market right. art products could give advice as to how to best market art products per se or art. And we've spoken to gallery owners and people who, right. you know, and, and so a lot of times it's just getting it out there, you know. I I love what yeah. you're, I love what you're describing. I, I think you're right. I think that not, you know, there are different marketplaces for different products. Mm -hmm. And I immediately, I'm, I'm not sure if you've explored Etsy as an example, which is right. a marketplace for artists. And to your point, you know, either people can search on Etsy because they're looking for something specific or I browse Etsy all the time. And if I see something that catches my eye, that speaks to me. And so I think it's, it's a place, it's a community, right, of artists, like sort of by artists for artists. So that in some ways, if you're looking to sell your art and you're looking for exposure, mm -hmm. it, in that instance, it may be less about finding a focus group to say, you know, is this good or is this a bad idea? It, that is your idea. That is your product. That is what it is. And I think you're almost bypassing that step and you're thinking about, you know, how, where are the places where I can get exposure, whether it's Etsy or whether it's an artist, you know, market. I know there's a lot of like community um, fairs that have artists market throughout our area. So I, I think, I think to your, you know, very salient point. In that instance, you probably aren't looking for the focus group necessarily. You're looking for the right marketplace that will appreciate, you know, the gift that that Mara has and can bring to that community. And, and she's been. And yeah. bizarre to American Visionary Art Museum and um, but Etsy might, you know, you might ruin your future if you go into Etsy. You know, there are some, there's great artists there. In fact, um, an artist who's been at Van Alley, I know, sells her work and Etsy. So, you know, there's all this conflicting, but she's not self-taught, you know. Um, so then, you know, the Venn diagram is very, uh, but that's, you know, yeah. Matt, you might also want to think about, you know, you were saying before, you can't sell yourself, sell yourself. Well, selling, you know, can mean a whole lot of different things, right? So maybe if you want to stay away from things that look too commercial, right, and you want to be more in the sort of art, you know, real art world, whatever, whatever that means, um, then perhaps you try to just get exposure as that as that artist, whether that means you start a blog, um, you know, you write on topics of things that are important to you, or, you know, maybe you try to get some speaking engagements in, in some forums that are relevant. Um, you know, you try to sort of raise just general awareness and just get exposure to the greatest degree possible in a variety of different forums. Um, that's your selling, right? That's right. how you sell your sell your selling. Eileen's right. I mean, this is doesn't fit within sort of Re what we've been about me, because uh, you're. Yeah, that's that's great advice as well. Um, the other thing, is, as Lisa was talking, I was thinking also maybe about maybe you know, t again looking for more exposure. Maybe ma thinking about making a donation of art to a place mm -hmm. where it could be exposed. 
and acknowledge. Mm -hmm. And that would, you know, whether that's a library or a hospital or, you know, there's a lot of nonprofits that I'm sure would be delighted. Um, and, and again, you know, that's sort of another way of having the art seen and appreciated and enjoyed. Um, and with a nameplate that says, you know, if you want more information, this is how right. you get in touch. I mean, it's a slower, it's a much more slow and organic process. But if you're looking to build a community of people that are, you know, purveyors of that particular art, that might be another way of doing that. That's great. Yeah, I mean, she's spoken and it's always, it was like, you know, DDA, um, uh, Jubilee, uh, <laughs> In, in various, you know, Ivy Mount graduations or um, been on covers of like the National Association of Developmental Disabilities state directors things. So, in, or else it's Jewish related things, you know, a lot of, so the resume starts looking very Jewish and disabilities oriented, you know, and so. Right, they need you know, to expand. Want to out of that or, or yeah. not. Well, there, I know that there are, yeah, there are also a lot of um, art, both co they're commercial oriented, but their, their purpose is to raise up unknown artists, right? And make art accessible by the general population. Like Saatchi art is one, and there's these expos, I went to one in Brooklyn, you know, last summer. Um, they're all over the place. And their, their sole purpose is to make art accessible emerging. to- Emerging artists. To everybody, yeah. Um, and they focus on emerging artists. And I met, actually, when I was there, I met a woman from Gaithersburg who does these amazing, you know, um, sketches with, with colored pencils. So, you know, I think for Mari, it's just, you got to keep on getting out there. You got to keep on plugging it away. It's exposure, 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 and just decide what it is that you're actually selling mm -hmm. and what it is that you, how you want to um, sort of establish that business. And if that means you, you don't want to go commercial and you just want to stay, you know, pure in the art lane, then then just do that for now. That's great. Any great other? Advice. Yeah. I was just going to say one quick thing that, um, I, and I tried to put some things in the, in the chat as well, but, you know, this goes back to last week's session about it takes a village. It sounds like in your case with something specialized, it's really about the networking. And just like Lisa and Eileen had mentioned about like the friends of friends, I think that it's really about, um, you know, once you kind of understand where you want Mara's art to be and where you think, you know, is her place in the art world, then you continue down that road and trying to have those conversations with those people mm -hmm. and, and just be laser focused. It's, it's really like an MVP. You're, you're kind of like, you already have a sense of what you want, where you want to be. So instead of doing everything all over the place, just hone in and try and just keep unfolding. I think it's unfolding. also ha having the guts to then follow up with people, you know, you know, talk to a collector and like, well, she should be at Pier 25. She should, she should be carried here. I'm like, well, how do you do that? Oh, you just go there with your work and you should, and I'm like, yeah, well. You have to lose your inhibitions there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you for sharing that. And I just want to make sure because that we, and we do are great on time, but I do want to make sure that we have um, some good conversation that hopefully will interact with one another. And so I know that um, Nancy and Adrian had asked if we could go back and explain what the bullet point means, market for product or product for market, I lost track. Um, do you want to unmute Nancy? And just because I'm not sure if I, if I, no, I just really, I mean, I, I, I wasn't paying attention at that moment, and I don't know what that differentiation is. That's yeah. Now, I, I think actually the conversation we were just having was a good, um, actually, description of what that means. So, you know, in one instance, you're looking, you've got a product, and you want to see if there's a market for your product, right? You're the, so Activity Rocket was ex an example of that. We had this idea of a website. And we needed to, so that was the product. And we had to determine if there was a market, both with the okay. parents and with the activity providers for our product. But sometimes you have a product. And I think the art example that we were just talking about with Mara. So, you know, Mara has, right? She has a product already. And she's really looking to see, you know, if, if there, you know, there, there's a market of artists um, but is there a market of artists or a market of buyers for the product that she has? And so it's sort of differentiating it in that way. 
I hope that if that helps. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Basil, I, you know, not to call you out, but I know you've asked in some of our past sessions, I feel like this is a good time for you if you wanted to talk a little bit because your art is music and that's kind of similar with Mara. I wonder if we stay on that theme if you wanted to take a moment. Go ahead. Oh, um, me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 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 I, uh, um, I, I, I started a, uh, I started a thing on Google, um, on Google My Business or something like that, and um, and apparently we got a lot of views, but no real uh, no real insight onto anything. Mainly because we don't mainly because we don't have much product. We only have like cross in our library of things on on the site. We only have like one product, and uh, even that that hasn't gotten much views it's attached the the, the 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 product is attached the link is attached to our our um, our channel our, our youtube channel's uh playlist of the link and it's all and it's also attached to that site as well and for some reason it's not getting those, those videos aren't getting any in any, any look any looking at except for maybe just one and 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 that and that was a that was a week ago and I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know exactly what that's going on because the chan the site, the site is getting a lot of views, but and the channel is getting a lot of views, but the videos are not, and that's kind of confusing if you can if you can grasp that. Not to mention the fact that I keep getting distracted by so many things to make more of my original product to sell, and like what like and also I got a, a whole bunch of ideas like. In one in one place, I want to make a comic book series a trilogy. Another one is I want to is I want to turn that comic book trilogy into a video series or something like that, which is which is probably going to be one way or the other. One 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 is going to be for like publicity. The other one's going to be like the actual sell. But <clears throat> in another one, another video, I actually hope to I actually hope to sell. Period. Um, but um, but the the weird thing I find is that, um, is that, uh, well, I just found out my mom just gave me a test that I have ADHD, so that can be kind of confusing for me as well, because you know it's like, because it, 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 like it makes it more more confusing for me to focus. focus and keep stuff up all the time on the right in the right place in the right order in the right section or without taking it down prematurely all the time, and I had to get rid of all the distractions that were keeping me from doing that but now it's like I have to start fresh all over again so it's like I have no idea what I'm doing really and it's very confusing and I don't know anything about media or Google business or anything so I, I wish we could find a mentor or something to help him really turn it into a business. And something that doesn't cost so much money because Google's always asking for money to promote our businesses. Any, this, and anything really. Yeah. Anyone with suggestions or ideas on that? Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds to me a little bit like, I mean, you're, and I don't know a lot about your product, but it sounds like you're, you know, I, I would put you sort of in the category like Mara of an artist, like you've produced something that has special meaning to you and you're looking for a community of people that also appreciate what you've produced. And so I think some of the advice that we gave Mara as well, like what are, you know, to, to think about what are some of the communities that might um, you know, that might be interested in the product that you've produced and whether that's friends or whether that's, um, you know, uh, if it's a particular style of music or genre of music, like other musicians that work in that, you know, in that area or songs or playlists that are sort of like those. Um, but I think it's sort of, you know, maybe making a list of this is what it is and these are all the things that you know, the types of people or the types of music or the type of, you know, things that, that might um, be interested in this particular product and using that to guide sort of where you're, where you're marketing it. I don't, I, I wouldn't recommend spending a lot of money on, 
you know, Google or other, I just think it's, you well, know, we have to, in, 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 in order to get our business promoted, which it, which, 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 it, which, it, which if you, if you go on Google, you can find, you can find, you can find our business on Google. But sadly, like I said, we don't have enough product, but right. for the record, I did, I did put a lot of my music on SoundCloud and uh, that's, um, that, that's, that's, that's getting a lot of good reviews and all, and a lot of my, a lot of the friends I know, and and talk to actually actually um actually love all the stuff that I make um it's, but sadly a lot of people who I don't know have no idea of the stuff I make or any of it or whatsoever you know Azel have you talked to other artists that make that are having success selling things and ask them what they're doing I mean I think and Mara's uh, Michelle just made the same point you know. To try and figure out, go talk to 20 other artists that are doing the same thing that are having success. Some of them might just talk to you. I mean, artists collaborate. They don't really compete like other businesses. Well, I, I, I don't know any other artists, really. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know them. But I know some, but all the ones I knew are back where I used to live. Right. We well, just get on the phone and call them. <laughs> huh. We just tried to get um, connected to the... Um, what is it, Montgomery Community, uh, Montgomery Community, the media, the, um, yeah, MCM, yeah, Montgomery mm -hmm. Community Media, it's like the public uh, television like or something, I know, it, and, uh, but they haven't written back, maybe it's COVID, maybe, you know, but he, he needs- So I'll jump in real, I'll jump in real <laughs> quick. Um, you know, I think for something like this, social media is, is really a great place to spend a lot of time. Um, I agree with Eileen. I would not pay for Google ads or Google placement or, or anything like that, right? You need a basic website. You could be for free. I just built a website for free on Wix.com. It was very easy. Um, and you should live on Instagram, TikTok, uh, you know, Snapchat, you know, all of, all of the, the places where people, creative people live. Um, there are lots of meetup. It's called meetup.com. Right. There are lots of groups locally that are focused on different sort of areas. So you can, to John's point, like find, find a meetup group of creative people, of musicians, um, you know, look at sort of some of the DC, um, you know, weekend magazines on some listings of obviously no concerts or anything right now, but you know, where are these people congregating? Um, virtual now, everything's virtual. That's great. And think about how you are selling your music, right? You make music, but you, I think you have to define what it is you're selling a little bit more. Are you making just music for people to listen to? Like, I'm going to make my own album and I'm going to distribute that. Are you making soundtracks for people who are selling other things. For example, if I want to sell something and I'm looking for music to go behind my commercial or on my website or at my event, is that something that you would do? Do you help other artists produce their music? Um, obviously, I don't know where much more about your business to be able to point you in the right direction, but I think you have to think about how you're creating, putting your music into an actual business. Um, and then the only other piece of advice I will offer, uh, because you mentioned a couple of different things, like you mentioned your, your music business and your comic book business, which sounds awesome. Well, the, com Try the comic's just a prototype right now. It's not really going. The video business okay. is more than the comic business. Got it. Got it. Well, my, the point is, is that sometimes you have to really focus in on one thing and really give 100% of your time to one thing for a certain amount of time and see where you can get. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, if, you're, if you've gotten some traction and you're getting good feedback and you're moving and shaking, then you continue with that and maybe put the other project you know, to the side. Um, or if not, maybe you try the other project. So it's sometimes very hard to do a lot of things well at one time for anybody. Um, and especially when you're starting your business, it's really easy to get distracted, um, even within the business itself, right? Eileen and I had many instances where 
we would be chugging along and somebody would come up and be like, oh, you should do this. And you know what? It was a really good idea. But if we did that, it would take us away from sort of the core of what we were trying to build. Um, so that's what maybe like really think to yourself, do at least for the next three months, do I want to just be doing the music or do I want to give my comic book thing a try? You know, how do I want to characterize my business? What am I actually trying to sell? And then I would live in social media and just try to get out there as much as you possibly can for what you're trying to do. I also just want to note that in the chat, if you if you can see the chat, um, there are a lot of great ideas. I think a couple of people, uh, Mara and John and some others, and Katie put out some suggestions with some links to some meetups and to some other local um, community organizations that might be of interest when you're looking for um, other folks to network with. Um, I got one more question. Before well, we, uh... Basil, Basil, I'm sorry to cut you off. I just want to tell you two things. One, I've tried to stay up with all of those recommendations and I have cut and pasted them and privately put them in your chat. But I do want to make sure we have time for at least one more person to go. So if you could hold your question and I will promise to get it to Lisa and Eileen and get you an answer. But I just want to make sure we give everyone an opportunity to connect. But if you check your chat, I did try and make sure that you can see those suggestions. So you have that to follow. So maybe cut and paste that for yourself so you can save those suggestions. Um, but I know that Courtney had a really good um, example because it kind of relates to the here and now of COVID. And I just want to make sure we get to that. So um, Courtney, I'll quickly read it. And then you, I see you're unmuted and we can go from there. But it says, I've done a part-time, I've done part-time work making party and event favors for years now since the business involves get togethers and that's not problematic with the pandemic. I'm wondering how to pivot. So Courtney, if I didn't do you justice, please feel free to no, elaborate. No, thank you. Um, first of all, I can't quit my day job because that's what supports me and my kids and I've been doing it for a very long time. However, um, I, I grew up with one of those families that didn't have a whole lot of money to buy presents. So we were always told, make me something. And I have this ability to just be able to make or create almost anything. Um, I, I do have a picture here. I had my kids print it, but it looks like a gumball machine. If you can see it, yeah. it's actually a pumpkin. Oh. And we won no way. Pumpkin. It's a pumpkin. Um, wow. I created a gumball, a real working gumball machine from a pumpkin. Oh my gosh. Pumpkin. Wow. Carving contest. <laughs> but I guess my, my basic thing is I've always had this ability to make and create things. So it started right after college where I was making party favors for baby showers and um, wedding favors. And I've always done this as kind of a favor because I felt bad charging people that I knew and that I liked. <laughs> and it got to the point now where I have people who will tear something out of a magazine, give it to me and say, can you create something with, this is how I'm gonna set my table or this is the decorations that I'm gonna do but it involves get togethers wow. um, and people aren't really having get togethers anymore. So how do you pivot something that was sort of viable as a part-time business? And again, it was more word of mouth because my full-time job was what I did every you know day, but how do you pivot something um, during a time like this that's very specialized? Yeah, I so, mean, okay. no, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> um, so I was just gonna say, that's amazing. I wish I had a, a talent like that. Um, a couple of things. One, you should certainly be on Etsy too, if you're not. Um, two, I think there are a lot of interesting companies, like all of these catering companies, right? That were typically focused on events and businesses. They've all had to pivot too. And what are they doing, right? And can you team up with somebody there? Um, the card my yard people where you drive by, you know, the yards and you see these big giant signs in people's front yards, all of the celebrations now there's like graduation in a van, right? All these people have packaged up what they did before in person and figured out how ways to sort of deliver them in this, in this virtual world. Um, so I think that you can still do what you're doing, um, but just maybe tag on to other people that are offering similar things. So you sort of become part of a package. Um, people are still having 
super tiny baby showers and super tiny weddings and super tiny everything. And I think even more so, people are looking for incredibly creative ways to make those events special, right? So I would continue to do what you're doing. I would just maybe pivot your messaging a little bit, let people know that you're still out there, that you can create these memorable things and send to your loved one who's far away that can't be here, make people feel special. I know some businesses have done webinars, for example, to bring people together. They did like a cooking thing, but then they sent everybody who was participating either a home kit to actually make the food or maybe a, a spoon as a gift, like something that goes around, along with whatever the content was that was being created. So like so, a party of course, I think, kind of thing? Like a yeah, party in the yeah, thing? Yeah, I think you have a real opportunity here um, because it sounds like you're so super talented um, to create these special moments that everybody is trying to figure out, how am I gonna make my non-event <laughs> special? during all of this. So I think you, you should keep on doing what you're doing, but pay very close attention to people similar that were in the event space and look at how, what they're doing and maybe potentially join forces and then sort of start messaging to everybody on social media, like take tons of pictures of the things that you created for this baby reveal part. Like people are still doing these life moment things. They're just doing them differently. I was going to say also, first of all, you're, that was phenomenal. I still can't fathom how that's a pumpkin. I mean, that's that pumpkin. was yes. really... Another pumpkin. Yeah. A um, pumpkin. Okay. It's a you are, Oh my God. That's you're so unbelievable. Gifted. You are so gifted. And that is ridiculous. <laughs> there is definitely, you know, market for this. And what I was going to suggest is go to your, if you keep a customer list of if friends or family or people that have purchased things in the past, reach yeah. out to them to let them know, let them be your messenger as well. That, you know, during this time, you're, you know, you're, you're looking for other opportunities to share your craft. And while traditionally you had done X, now you are doing Y. And if you can give them one or two examples, whether it's party favors for a drive by, as you know, all the things that Lisa and the other folks in the chat were suggesting, I just think to let people know that you haven't gone dormant, you're pivoting with the times as well and, and stimulate them in some of the things that, um, that you have the capacity to do. So kudos Thank you. to you, beautiful. Thank you. Courtney, there's some more, there's the, also a lot of suggestions. Everyone should take um, Mara's advice about saving the chat, which I now need to find that example. Um, Oh, if you want to save the chat, you save chat by clicking on the three dots in your chat box. So down at the bottom where you would type your chat, if you click on those three dots, you can save your chat because there are some wonderful suggestions from everybody in this chat and that might be helpful for you to keep. And then I will try and pick a few that I can put in our recap. Um, and I just, I wanted to say also really quickly um, that I, it's my daughter's birthday today and it's her 16th birthday and I was Happy racking birthday. my brain. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, don't thank me. I didn't do it. Um, but anyway, and so my point is, thank you. Um, she really wanted to do a murder mystery party and I, you know, was thinking we're not doing that, you know, with COVID. Um, but I looked online and lo and behold, someone creatively figured out a way to put that online and do it virtually. So I'm not saying you would put your things virtually, but like if I knew about what you did, I would maybe buy party favors and, you know, we could go drive around and give them out to her friends or, or, you know, if I had a few friends for a socially distanced thing, I would love to give them out. I literally just bought bubbles because I was thinking that would be like fun, but my point is, I think that there's a lot you can do with, with what your talent is, and people more than ever would probably vie for something so unique and special um, in a time when we can't really get out and do other special things. So I think Instagram is your friend here, and I think that all the suggestions that Lisa and Eileen gave, um, as all, of course, um, everybody else's wonderful suggestions in the chat, but I actually think there's a lot of potential for you. And I think that um, looking at those other event companies is a really good start. Um, and one last thing I just wanted to tell you as far as really thinking outside the box is that um, event companies that do, you know, big galas and, 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 and those kinds of things are really hurting right now because, you know, they can't do that. And my husband works um, in commercial real estate 
And there is a company he met with that was really, um, it was like a theater company that does staging. And they literally hired um, this company to put mannequins and people to look like their building was crowded because it's not. Um, so they just pivoted in a really interesting way using what they do and what they have and trying to think about another audience that maybe would find value in that product. And now they're actually busy doing this whole other world. So I just think it's, I think, don't, don't think you're done. I think this is a new beginning for you and you should really be, be open to the opportunities. Thank you, everyone. Um, so we are at 557 and that's just enough time for me to launch our poll and tell you about our upcoming events. Um, so without further ado, if you do, oh, and by the way, Jillian, I don't know if we got our snapshot yet of our, of our picture, if we wanted to try. Yeah, um, of course we don't have the slides up. That would have been smart for me to mention earlier. I got some of those already. Awesome, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch my poll. We really would love your feedback as always. So please, if you don't mind taking a moment, um, so happy we were able to give these suggestions and really use real life examples. I just, um, I really hope that's meaningful for a lot of you. Um, and wanted to remind you about some of our upcoming events. And of course, I'm looking right now because I realized that um, we do have some new things going on. We have our amazing Arts and Crafts Club, by the way. I'm jumping around a little bit. Um, today on Tuesdays, we have Move with Kim and, and the E-Project. Tomorrow is our crafts, Arts and Crafts Club, which is led by Courtney's daughter. So um, I haven't been able to take it myself, but I've heard it is beyond fantastic. So if you haven't signed up for that, you should definitely do that. The same day tomorrow, we also have Travel and Adventure with Bridget, which um, I've also heard is fantastic. I think you might be going to Patagonia um, virtually. Thursday, we've got Culture Series um, and Bake with Sharon. We are making coconut macaroons. Um, Friday, we've got Space of Belonging in the morning. And of course, our amazing yoga and mindfulness with Daniel, who's here with us today, who is so talented. And if you haven't taken that class, you should. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sunday, we've got Trivia, which is super exciting. Um, and just a little nod again, um, because this is a, a not an every week thing. Um, the following Monday on, on July 20th, we have a Mama Peace Chat. Um, and that's really cool. It's at five from five to six o'clock exploring resilience and tips and tools for peace. Um, so I think that I've run through mostly everything. And I actually think that we've got, um, I think almost everybody has had the opportunity to give their, their do their poll. And I'm so proud of us. We do a, such a fantastic job of staying on time, mm -hmm. um, which is not my forte, but yet somehow here we always manage to make it happen. I wanna give a humongous thank you to Lisa and Eileen. Um, just a little known fact, I actually worked with Activity Rocket um, years ago. I think I mentioned when I started my business for Capital Baby Planners, we did it, we were kind of supported each other, but when I stopped that, I worked with them and they are, seriously the most tremendous inspiring just fierce amazing women and i couldn't have been more honored to have you know participated in that opportunity um so thank you both for your expertise and thank you all i just want to also give a shout out that all of you um really your your contributions and your support in the chat and your advice and your tips is so meaningful and i think that that was the goal of this is that it would be about the speakers but it would be about the support we have for one another and what we can do to help each other so um hopefully that reflects in the in our in our evaluations and moving forward and i'd love if you wouldn't mind also it's not an evaluation but if you like this format today or if you have suggestions about as we move forward looking at the topics we have which i will send you the syllabus for the rest of our sessions. Think about what would be valuable for you and just give me a little email and let me know because um, it really feels exciting when we're all participating and able to really contribute. So I uh, just wanted to give that. So without further ado, I'm going to sign off and wish everyone a wonderful thank day you. and thank you for everything thank and you. we'll see you soon. Bye everybody. Bye. Mm.